The end of the year always brings a lot of reflection and the year 2021 is no different. Hello love, thank you for spending your time with me today. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm a part-time reseller on websites such as Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. In this video, I am joining a bunch of other resellers since we reflect on the year 2021 and share our top 21 sales of the year. This collaboration is coming from Becky Park's YouTube course. Not only with the course you learn all of the ins and outs of YouTube, but you also buy into a community that supports you, that provides you a shoulder to lean on. So if something that you wanna do in 2022 is join the YouTube community, Go down to the description below, you will see a $40 off coupon as well as a referral code for you to join our community. Not only am I excited to share my top 21 sales with you, but I'm also excited to see everyone else's top 21 sales of everyone that's linked down in the description. I will be watching everyone's videos and I welcome you to check out everyone's videos as well. Finally, if you are joining me from somebody else's YouTube channel i welcome you i would love to know whose channel that you came from and i would also like to hear a little bit about your sales for the format of this video i'm going to focus on going through my year from january all the way to december so everything that you're going to see is in order so the very first sale that i had was a pair of joe's jeans these sold for 60 dollars the original cost of goods was $12, and these came from a B&G trading premier box. And I went to actually go look for the box to try to link it down below and put a picture for you. But when I went to look at it, I realized that this company is actually closed. I know that they had a lot of complaints, so I don't know if that played into it. I don't know if maybe they're just revamping things, but I, at first I was like, okay, maybe this is just, I Googled the wrong thing, so I kept checking, kept checking. All of their websites are completely down. Social media is down, so I'm not sure what happened, but it seems like this company is no longer. The next thing to sell was a Free People Blue Flowy, it was like a baby doll type dress. It sold for $44. This is something that I picked up for $7.50 at my local Goodwill. It was, I remember, something that came on out on a fresh rack. And it was one of my first times going to Goodwill. And I was kind of like nervous because I know some Goodwills are like okay with you going to the fresh racks. Some of them are not. This one I found out very quickly is perfectly okay with it. Found it, snatched it right away. I was excited that it was free people. Uh, being that it was kind of one of my first times out in Goodwill, I just saw the tag, grabbed it. The next thing to sell was a Halogen Ivy Cashmere Sweater. This sold for $44. This was also $12 and came from my B&G Trading Premier box. I don't remember how many pieces, I think it was like 50 pieces maybe in that box. Again, I tried to look it up, didn't get very far. The next thing that sold was a Faithful the Brand Romper. It was kind of light and airy. This I picked up for $4.50 at Goodwill and it sold for $48 on Poshmark. After that, I sold a Clark's Black Suede and Leather. They were Mary Jane pumps. These sold for $62. These came from my personal closet. And I want to say I probably spent about $40 at DSW. I did get some wear out of them. The next thing to sell was a Trina Turk colorful, it was a color block dress. This sold for $95 and it was also out of my personal closet. I want to say that I got it years ago from Saks Off Fifth, which is the Saks Fifth Avenue outlet store. I think I, I bought it for like $30. I wouldn't imagine I would spend much more than that in my personal closet, especially the time period that I bought it in. I am in Orlando and we do have kind of a big outlet base. We have a couple of outlets, so that's, that's helpful um, in my own shopping at least. The next thing that sold was Armani wool dress pants. These sold for $99. 
These came from my boyfriend. I want to say that he himself bought them from the real world, from the real real, got some use out of them, and then ended up passing them on to me to resell. The next thing was also a personal piece of my own. It was an Adriana Papel, I think is how you pronounce that last name. It sold for $75. I wore this to New Year's on two different occasions and then other than that it pretty much stayed in the dry cleaning bag so it was in perfect condition none of the beading was gone or anything like that um, I figured if I was ever going to wear a dress like this I would just re, re buy something similar I also do a lot of rent the runway so I am cleaning out my own closet because I'm starting to rent those pieces I'm also, as I get more into reselling, realizing that pieces will just keep coming so I can sell off my personal closet. I can always get another piece. Reselling has really opened my eyes to that. Um, there's always clothes out there. The next thing to sell was a craft. It was like a biking shirt. I'm not, I don't know too much about biking. I'm sure there's a specific freeze for it. This sold for $49. And it came from my Quick Lots Amazon palette. I've talked about my Quick Lots Amazon palette before and saying that it's made a significant amount of money, especially because the cost of goods here was only 50 cents. So I would say selling it for $49 was good enough for me. And I, a lot of pieces sold for $30 and up from that Amazon palette. And the next thing to sell was also from my personal closet kind of they were michael michael kors blue suede platforms that had some like gold trimming on them i did get these from poshmark for myself but when i got them i found them to be really uncomfortable i am really picky about my shoes it has to be completely comfortable and i have to be able to wear it all night or i won't even put it on my foot and this the moment i put them on i was like oh it's even slightly uncomfortable there's no way so i put them up on poshmark these sold for 45 dollars. i want to say i bought them in like the 50 dollar range so that did come with a loss but they were out of my house i knew i wasn't going to wear them technically it was for my personal closet because i bought them for myself Another piece from my personal closet was Kelly and Katie flats. They were navy blue. These sold for $63 and I got quite a bit of use out of them. And I want to say I uh, spent about $30 at DSW on those. I obviously buy a lot of shoes from DSW. I am one to typically wear shoes until like literally they have holes in there in the bottoms. So I have been trying to get in the practice of getting shoes, listing them, and then periodically refreshing the pictures to represent the current status of the shoe. And once they sell, they're out. That way I don't overwear shoes, have a bunch of scuffs on them. Like I said, I realized that there's always more that you can get. And if I go to Goodwill or if I go to DSW, I can just get another pair. Another thing to sell from the B&G trading box for $12 was some blank NYC pants. These sold for $50 over on Poshmark. Another piece from my personal closet, Cole Haan. Um, I want to say there was a specific name for it, like chalk print or something, but they're like alligator print flats. They have just a little bit of heel, like a loafer. I suppose is the word that I'm looking for. These sold for $50. I did get a good amount of wear for them. I bought them from DSW, of course, for $50. So again, I did take that loss, but I did wear them and technically they're from my personal closet anyway. Another piece from, you guessed it, my personal closet. Michael Michael Kors brown suede platforms. These I sourced off of Poshmark, I want to say I only got them for like $10 and I wore them literally like 
all the time. Um, I would say I probably wore these like 50 times throughout the one year that I had them. I ended up selling them for $48. Of course, the pictures represented the current state that the shoes were in. I actually only listed these shoes maybe like 10 days before they actually sold. So they were really current in the condition that they were in. It was kind of sad when they sold, but again, I knew that I would just keep wearing them and keep wearing and keep wearing them and they would get in worse and worse condition. That way, everything that I have stays current um, and I'm not wearing straggly clothing. I also sold one more item from the Quick Lots Amazon palette. Again, 50 cents was the cost of goods there. This was the uh, Hart Schaffner Marks Nordstrom blazer in size 42 short. It was like a navy or lighter, lighter navy color. It sold for $49. Another piece from my personal closet is a Laundry by Shelly Seagal. It's an olive green, satiny, like silky dress. Um, I typically, dresses like that, I put the word satin and silky in there. It was not silk content, but you know that kind of flowy feel. Um, this sold for $67. I want to say I probably spent about this much on this dress. I honestly don't remember because I had it for so long and I literally wore it one time. Um, so I was happy just to get that out of my closet. If I happen to want something in that color again, I promise you I can find it. The next thing I sold was a Lily Pulitzer pineapple print. It was a pink and green dress. This I sourced off of Poshmark. I actually won one of the Love It or List It challenges. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I wanna say they give you like $20 to it. So I sourced this in my size just in case it didn't sell. Of course I wore it. And now my highest price sale of the entire year actually came from a Quick Lots Nordstrom general merchandise half palette. I checked on the website and they don't have any available right now, but I will link down below the Quick Lots um, area where you can find that half palette if they ever come up again. This was a d pair of DKNY champagne color curtains. Um, it did have the size on it. I can't remember the size off the top of my head, but they did sell for $125. They were not new in packaging. I listed them as new without tags because it didn't look like they were used or anything like that. Probably just a return that didn't have packaging on them. That again was my highest price sale of the entire year that came from the Quick Lots Nordstrom General Merchandise half palette. So I think that I'm probably gonna end up getting another one of those half palettes again when they come around. I did just get a thread up 200 pound lot that I'm planning on listing soon, but after I get that all listed and figured out, I'll probably go back to Quick Lots and see what they got going on. The next thing, again, was from Akira Chicago. It was a mini skirt set. This I sourced off of Poshmark. I wanna say I paid like $20 for it. This I got for a friend's birthday cruise in January of 2020. That was the last thing that we did before everything turned to uh, craziness. We didn't know what was going on, but I will tell you that everyone was like super cautious of making sure that we washed our hands, used hand sanitizer, everything was just coming about, but it really wasn't like the biggest deal yet. It was kind of, you know, overseas, not really our thing. As we came back, that's when cruise ships started to shut down. So we were very happy to get that last little bit in before the craziness took over. This um, sold for $62. I was okay with letting it go, although I love it. Gained a little bit of weight since then and I wasn't comfortable with the, um, showing the midriff. Again, if I need something like that again, if I lose weight, I can just buy something back again. After that, I sold um, a pack of Modern Thread towels. 
these sold for $59 and I was like so surprised, so confused. I don't typically spend that much money on towels. There didn't seem to be anything that special about these towels, but I shipped them out. Somebody bought them for full price. Okay, didn't really think anything much about it. Once they were delivered and it came time for the person to rate the item, they actually ended up saying that it was an accidental purchase and they would never pay that much for the towels and I agreed with them 100%. Poshmark ended up saying, sorry, you already have the towels, you're welcome to relist them. I told them you can use my description, you can use my pictures, whatever you want, it's all yours, sorry. I mean, I took the money obviously, but I kind of felt bad for this person. I think what ended up happening is I use Posher VA to relist or delist and relist all my items. And a lot of times I take things down during closet clear out days and I take them down and I take them down and I take them down. And so when I relist, I typically say, okay, raise it by $10. And I think that's what happened here is they raised them by $10 and maybe I relisted again and it raised it by $10. And I didn't realize, I didn't look at it closely enough to see how high the price was. I don't know. I didn't think that they were worth that much. I don't know. I took the money. It is what it is. I reinvested it into other stuff. I don't know if that person was able to sell them or if they ended up keeping them. Um, I just kind of feel bad, but it happened. The final thing that I would like to highlight for 2021 is a jumbo bottle of Aveda Botanical Repair Shampoo. I sourced these off of, or this off of Mercari. I did one of the listing challenges. I want to say if you list like 30, or maybe it's 50 items within the challenge window, you get $20 off of $50. So this I found it was $65 or I paid $65 rather on an offer, the $20 off. So I ended up paying $45 and it sold for over $100. So I definitely made profit on that. This is also a shampoo that I use myself. So I knew if it didn't sell, then I could use it. I have plenty of it right now. But again, I try to source stuff doing online arbitrage on stuff that I know that I'm gonna be able to personally use so that I won't take as much of a loss for it. In thinking and reflecting on the year, I noticed that I was hoping to highlight sales that were $50 or more. Some of them were under the $50 range and it was really $40 or more. I am really hoping when I come back to this style of video in 2022, I will have all of my sales being $50 or more. So that's really my focus of this next year is having a higher ASP. That means I might need to change my sourcing strategies up a little bit. I have been going to consignment stores to get rid of some old inventory. I haven't taken the dive to really dig through everything yet and see if I can find some items for myself to sell, but I think that might be my next step. If looking at these different items triggered a Bolo brand or a Bolo list for you, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to be able to continue to share everything that I'm learning along the way with you. And I would love for you to share with me as well down in the comments if you know of another YouTuber that you think I should check out. And if you are a YouTuber and you want me to check you out as well, go ahead and put that, that comment and I will be sure to do so. I love supporting other people. I'm super grateful for this community and I love to give back as well.